Hi, I'm Charlotte Moore, Artistic Director of Irish Repertory Theatre. And I'm Kieran O'Reilly, Irish Reps Producing Director. And I'm Amy Holmes, Executive Director of the Adrian Brinkerhoff Poetry Foundation. Thank you for joining us for Poetic Reflections, Words Upon the Window Pane. For the past several years, the Brinkerhoff Foundation has worked with Irish filmmaker Matthew Thompson to create beautiful short films that blend dazzling Irish poets of the 20th century with potent new voices of the 21st, capturing them in stirring, personally significant locations in Ireland, London, and New York. When Amy approached us about presenting the Foundation's first major U.S. exhibition of these phenomenal films, we jumped at the opportunity. In addition to being available online both at irishrep.org and brinkerhoffpoetry.org, visitors and passers-by can stop and view the films in a new installation in our lobby windows, the first public activation of our space since the COVID-19 shutdown began in March of 2020. We are delighted to use our window panes to reflect the multicultural face of Ireland. So if you're in New York, stop by and see it on West 22nd Street. During this long pause in our communal cultural life, the pleasures and comfort of poetry have taken on greater importance and new resonance. We hope visitors to the exhibition, both online and in person, will respond to the universal themes explored by some of Ireland's greatest poets of the 20th century and some of the most important and diverse voices writing in English today. From now through May 2nd, we'll be releasing collections of poetry in three themes. Tonight's theme is home and sense of place and includes seven poems that explore the idea of home, the experience of migration and the importance of place. Enjoy. I will arise and go now and go to any free and a small cabin built there of clay and wattles made. Nine bean rolls will I have there, a hive for the honey bee, and live alone in the be loud glade. And I shall have some peace there, for peace comes dripping slow, dripping from the veils of the morning to where the cricket sings. Dear midnight's all a glimmer, and noon a purple glow, and evening full of the linnet's wings. I will arise and go now, for always night and day. I hear lake water lapping with slow sounds by the shore, while I stand on the roadway or on the pavements a grey. I hear it in the deep heart's core. I often imagine my parents came here after hearing the sea of the British Isles as if they put their ears to its shell and the waves threw themselves tipsy against conch willing them to come over. Then there were the things we understood without words. How sun in this place is a slow swell the coastal path walks of Dundee, graffiti hieroglyphics, damp shoes against Sheffield cobbles, and the taste bud clench of a tart apple. We learnt this country fiercely. My father felt its knuckles crush his jaw. My mother delivered its children. I have been kissed deeply by its tongue it has licked Yorkshire all over my bowels, left me with the blushed cheeks of a first crush. I am a half-written love letter. It does not know where to send. So when go home, 
becomes a neighborhood war cry. We understand we are not what you wanted, have been clean written out of your folklores, but we have built here, loved here, died here, already carry the heartache of leaving. When we go home, we go back reeking of you. Seven dog days we let pass, naming queens in Glen McNass. All the rare and royal names, wormy sheepskin yet retains. Ethan, Helen, Maeve and Fand, golden Deirdre's tender hand. But the Bigfoot sung by Vion, Cassandra Ronsar found in Lyon, queens of Sheba, Meath and Connet, quaffed with crown or gaudy bonnet. Queens whose finger once did stir men. Queens were Ethan of fleas and vermin. Queens men drew like Mona Lisa or slew with drugs in Rome and Pisa. We named Lucrezia Crivelli and Titian's lady with amber belly. Queens acquainted in learned sin, Jane of Jewry's slender shin. Queens who cut the bogs at Glanna, Judith of Scripture and Gloriana. Queens who wasted the east by proxy, or drove the ascot, the tinker's doxy. Yet these are rotten, I ask their pardon, and weave the sun on rock and garden. These are rotten, so you're the queen of all our living, or have been. The cookies don't sing anymore. They click. Mosquitoes turn drone. Metropolis of crypto bro. Tax deductible greed. A door opens. An island drowns. A playground emerges. A boy, his toy. Depending on the faith, the most dangerous part of a wealthy man is his index finger. What he points to who he lands on, a civilization, disposable income, pirate in cargo short, new world, old order. Meanwhile, we, diaspora, separated by sea, peel platanos and cut them on the same angle our mothers taught us to clap when the plane lands on either shore. Now, the beaches are gated and no one knows the names of the dead. Now investors clean their beaks in the river, and this is how a man becomes a flood. Landlord of nothing, king of no good sky. Watch paradise misbehave. Watch the night pearl into a necklace of fists. Watch this, el junque, a real god machine, unhinge her jaw and swallow the flock. Where are the Puerto Ricans, huh? Cuchifrito, ghost town, battery operated citizenship. An island is not a tarmac. A disaster is not a destination. When night stirs in me, it brings no dream of sea, no quench, no liquid reprieve, no. 
Night raises only the old roar, sets the stench of petrol spilling once more. Oh, night, how polite. The strangers who pushed me to choose heirlooms to send out to safety. How their smiles grew shaky when I chose only the front door key. Oh, home. Down in the night damp grass, I stood alone. Men watched me from the lawn. I knew their mute gaze grown grey, grown cold. As I knew all the women huddled on the gravel, how they folded whispers in their shawls. I turned from them and watched it begin, the brightening, our windows lit one by one from within, cellar to hall to kitchen, how the ballroom shone, how the library blazed. If Brigade Bell sang, they sang in vain, for flames were already spilling up the drapes, erasing every hand and face from their gilt frames, swiping china and ivory knives, fox furs and silks, tugging precious stones from each brooch's golden grip. Ghosts, those flames, racing up the stairs, sending smoke through slates, a vast constellation of sparks to star the dark. Oh, paraffin splash, oh, ash. When the eaves creaked, one boy came to me, shy grin turned Year. Oh, the house of the thief is known by the trees. When I went to leave, I could feel my back gleam. Now, I may have no home of my own. I may be alone, but I'm not meek. No, I'm a stone released from old gold. And oh, I blaze a Sunday through every week. Since I haven't danced among my fellow initiates, following a looped procession from woods at the edge of a village, Tata's people would think me unfinished. A child, but never sloughed off the childish estate to cross the river boys of our tribe must cross in order to die and come back grown. I was raised in a strange land by small increments. When I bathed my mother the days she was too weak, when auntie broke the news and I chose a yellow suit and white shoes to dress my mother's body. At the graveside, and the man who I had almost grown to call dad, though we both needed a hug, shook my hand.
If my alternate self, who never left, could see me, what would he make of these literary pretensions? This need to speak with a tongue that isn't mine. Would he be strange to me, as I to him? Frowning as he greets me in the language of my father. My father's father. And my father's father's father. Across the embankment path, as always, deferring the bridge. The river nosed past, pliable, oil skinned, wearing a transfer of gables and sky. Hunched over the railing, well away from the road now, I considered the dirty keeled swans. Something slobbered, curtly, close, smudging the silence. A rat slimed out of the water, and my throat sickened so quickly that I turned down the path in cold sweat. God, another was nimbling up the far bank, tracing its wet arcs on the stones. Incredibly, then, I established a dreaded bridgehead. I turned to stare with deliberate, thrilled care at my hitherto snubbed rodent. He clockworked aimlessly a while, stopped, back bunched and glistening, ears plastered down on his knobbed skull, insidiously listening. The tapered tail that followed him, the raindrop eye, the old snout. One by one, I took all in. He trained on me. I stared him out, forgetting how I used to panic when his grey brothers scraped and fed behind the hen coop in our yard, on ceiling boards above my bed. This terror, cold, wet furred, small clawed. Retreated up a pipe for sewage. I stared a minute after him. And then I walked on and crossed the bridge. Thank you very much for joining us. We hope you enjoyed these wonderful poems. This is the first of three digital premieres of film collections by the Adrian Brickerhoff Poetry Foundation. Don't miss part two 
Identity, premiering on Monday, April 5th at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. And part three, Writing and Love, premiering on Monday, April 19th at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. And if you're in New York, come see these films in person in Irish Rep's Lobby Windows at 132 West 22nd Street. Thanks again for watching, and we hope to see you again soon.